In the recent past, when people would think about North Dakota, they often imagined wide open spaces, badlands, and buffalo. Today, the thought of North Dakota immediately triggers thoughts of oil pipelines and the Standing Rock tribe. The Dakota Access Pipeline became a serious issue for the Standing Rock people when the decision was made to change the pipeline route from crossing near Bismarck due to the route's proximity to water sources and residential areas to one and a half mile upstream of the Standing Rock Reservation. The Missouri is a massive river, highly prone to flooding and ice jams. Pipelines fail. They fail in floods and they fail for unknown reasons. What we know is when they fail near rivers, it can be catastrophic. When the Standing Rock people understood the seriousness of the proposal, call was broadcast to the world to protect the water. Individuals from over 300 tribes descended on the encampment to stand in solidarity. When the call to protect the water spread like wildfire across social media, canoe families from the Upper Columbia United Tribes and beyond were quick to respond. Kind of what happened first was, I have a, a call of tribal members that have been Ben Dupree is there, um, and I met Ben on our journeys, um, our journey to Kettle Falls, and then of course we did a journey for July on Chippewa, well, and, and I helped organize that, and I met Ben there, and well Ben ended up in North Dakota, and so with the Standing Rock people, and say, hey, it would be pretty cool if, if we could get the canoes over here on the water, they don't have canoes. So Ben started talking to their elders about our canoes, and. They told Ben, they said, could, could you ask him to come? Um, so we came back and then we just got on the internet, got on the phone, started calling, using social media, whatever we could use to get a hold of other tribes. And of course I had contacts with the Plateau tribes, but I had to figure out, okay, how am I gonna get a hold of the, the coastal tribes and, and Alaska? And so when I posted it on Facebook and on the River Warriors, social media on Facebook, the page. Um, then it started going out quick. I got a hold of Hanford McLeod first, and then Hanford got to started getting a hold of tribes on the coast, and then the uh, Clinkets up in Alaska messaged me and said, hey, we're coming, can you give us directions? And so all of a sudden it started rocking. Yeah, basically the chairman and Ben talked and the chairman said, um, from what I understood was that they wanted us to go from Bismarck. And so we said, okay, that's what we'll do then. Protect us out of the way and give us strength. We have others that have brought water from their homeland that we will share in the water as our brothers and our sisters sing prayer songs for us. That's the work that's going on right now. that was really important that that we go and do that because that's what their entire their water protectors and that's what we do um, yeah we paddle for the salmon but 
without the water, there, there is no salmon. Um, there is no fish. There is no uh, life for our tribes, basically. And so I felt it was really important that we go and we represent and we put those canoes in the water and we pray on that Missouri River for that water and for what they were standing for, um, which is to chop the head off that black snake. You could tell it was gonna storm that first day, but just most natives will tell you, don't curse the rain, it won't come back. <laughs> we just, you know, accepted it. So then that storm hit, man. Just rolling hard, hard, hard. We're like we can make it, we can make it, we're almost there. And just turned dark, dark, calm for a second. These black clouds with the silver lining. Waterfalls and hail and wind. Just, that hail just smacked my face. I'm like, we can make it, we can make it. Hail hit us like, go to the shore, go to the shore, go now. indescribable about uh, some of the emotional and spiritual things that are felt and experienced. Um, I mean, it's just uh, an awesome feeling. Um, it's almost like a, a sports championship game or something or where you win and you have a, a family member playing. I mean, it just comes over you and you just get moved. and. Probably the best way I can describe the uh, feeling of it. It's not even worse to explain just um, watching the people and what it meant to the Standing Rock people and to the visitors there. The, that we brought these sacred living things, you know, these, these canoes. Because to me, they're alive, they're, they have a life. And we brought them there and, and they understood why we were there. And they understood the meaning behind what we were doing. And it was just so powerful and, and so moving that you, you, there's no words to explain that besides shedding tears, you know. I mean, it still makes me tear up. all those different canoes from all the different areas and knowing that we were there for one purpose, one heart, one mind, to help the people there and our prayers to to help them stop that pipeline. That was that was, it was just so moving. Plus to have so many tribes and 
one place at one time. Um, and I've always said, we're, tribes will never be able to be where we want to be until we stand as one. I mean, yes, we're, we're sovereign entities. Yes, we have our own treaties. The United States divided us on purpose. So when I'm on the water, when I was actually on the water, I was thinking, this is how it should be. Um, the divide and conquer wall is being tore down. And if we can tear that wall down and become one people in one battle, and yes, we still have our individuality as sovereign entities, and we still have our own treaties, but we need to help each other. Um, no one tribe is more important than another, than another. We need to all realize we're all important. All of our cultures are important and our tie to this land, Turtle Island, Mother Earth, is extremely important because they've had 500 years on Turtle Island and they've did nothing but destroy it for 500 years. A species of animal or plant has disappeared every year since Europeans landed on this continent. That's, that's a big break in the circle of life. But we need to come to an understanding that we must stand together. And it's not just Standing Rock. Menominees and Apaches, there's a bunch of tribes right now standing up. But the Nodopal, where Standing Rock is, that's leading the way. And that's just the beginning and what I want people to know is you got to keep, we have to keep going. We can't stop here. Um, we have to keep moving forward. We have to keep fighting for what's right, and that's our Mother Earth. If we don't fight for Mother Earth, we're not going to be here. That's the bottom line. This is just one of many stories. Our hope is that this story inspires people to look ahead. The awakening at Standing Rock is shining a bright light on the importance of protecting water. Not just the Missouri, but all waters. And not just for the benefit of some, but for the benefit of all.